Norwegian art in the 1880s saw the arrival of a new French-inspired realism. The protagonists were young artists known as the Greens, and their main works during this period can be seen together at the National Gallery in Oslo. Christian Krogh's essay in social realism, his huge painting, Albertine, showing prostitutes awaiting medical examination at the police station, caused widespread consternation at the time. In comparison, the realism of Erik Verenschuld is less provocative, a careful observation of Norwegian rural life that is captured in the bright light of day. During this period, there was a close collaboration between artists and writers, and Verenschuld's portrait of the famous playwright Henrik Ibsen is an impressive reminder. The most original landscape painter of the period was without doubt Kitty Tjelland. The romantic Summer Night was painted in 1886, while she stayed with friends at Flescombe, a farm outside Oslo. A tranquil blue lake dominates the canvas, reflecting the colours of the evening sky. Distant hills accentuate its prominence. The background is indistinct, painted in broad brush strokes to stress the main forms only. In contrast, the water lilies and the vegetation in the foreground are rendered with almost photographic accuracy. Realistic details, combined with the pale light of the summer night, give this painting a mysterious character. While this Nordic summer night is carefully recorded in realistic detail, the painting still conveys a feeling of nature's mysticism. The reflection of a limitless sky in the waters of the lake sets free the spirit and the imagination. Man is present in this landscape, but in the form of a lone figure in a boat, seen in the distance, and subordinate to the spell of nature. Capturing the summer night as an artistic theme was wholly in keeping with the national program of the day, which tended to emphasize specific national characteristics. Kitty Tjeland was a headstrong woman who had to struggle against her father's wishes to become an artist. Not until the age of 30 was she allowed to study. She was trained in Munich and Paris. Here she is portrayed by her best friend and colleague, Harriet Becker, in 1883, simply dressed but dignified. She was not remarkable for her beauty, but for her strong will, intelligence and enthusiasm. She became a leading figure in the artistic and intellectual milieu of her time and one of the founders of the Norwegian Women's Liberation. This photograph from Munich was taken when she was 35 in 1878. Summer Night by Kaelin's friend and teacher, Eilif Petersen, was painted during the same year and at the same location. The two paintings have much in common, but in the work of Petersen, clear symbolist overtones are discernible in the decaying birch tree and the crescent moon mirrored in the lake. Though nine years younger, Peterson was her close friend and teacher during the years in Munich. But by that important summer of 1886, it seems probable that Kaland had become the dominant influence. During that summer, they stayed with a group of painters at Flescombe, the farm outside Oslo. This photograph shows them gathered on the veranda it was with Summer Night that Kitty Tjeland made her breakthrough at the age of 43. But the lush and tranquil landscape of southeast Norway attracted her far less than did the wild and, in those days, still rather desolate heathlands of the west coast. Some beautiful studies from her early years already show her sensitive perception of a countryside that looked rather drab to most of her contemporaries. The open horizon and stormy skies of Yaren 
close to her native town of Stavanger, was to be her lasting love and provide the subject matter for most of her later work. Her love for details is shown in the delicate handling of the flower meadow at the edge of the sand dunes. A lowering sky hangs over the flat landscape and merges with an endless ocean. Man is insignificant in this vast universe. The typical peat bogs of Yaren became her favorite subject, a theme she painted from the late 1870s until shortly before she died in 1914. It's an irony that it was not these uncompromising studies of inhospitable nature that brought her to the attention of the public, but the image of a dreamy summer night in a peaceful landscape. After Sunset, painted in 1885, is the first in a series of such paintings. The artist's approach to this subject matter followed in the main the teachings of the realist school. These were, in principle, to be open-air paintings. But then there were the preliminary studies, conscientiously prepared beforehand, and sometimes finishing touches added later in the studio. This picture is painted in her rough style of the early 80s. It is signed, Paris, 1886. Her friend, Eric Ferenschuld, painted her portrait in 1891. Dressed in red with a flamboyant hat, it reveals a determined lady of some character. The significance given to her cigarette in the painting seems to signal her emancipated views. The famous cartoonist, Olaf Kulbronson, saw her with friendly malice, stressing her squat figure and rather haughty profile, and again showing her with her inseparable cigarette. This beautiful study for Summer Night was made during that same summer of 1886. The main features of the composition are already there, but the reflected light is pink rather than blue which suggests that the study was executed earlier in the evening than the main painting. The Nordic summer night as an artistic theme was a new inspiration for the realist painters. These artists made good use of the long twilight hours to carry out studies in the open, something that the French painters, for example, had no opportunity to do because of the short dusk of Central Europe. Summer night is a realistic painting but it deals also with the mysticism of nature. Kitty Jeland drew her inspiration from contemporary French art, but in choosing the water mirror of the lake as her central theme, she was to anticipate the neo-romantic movement of the 1890s. Kitty Jeland was one of the very few female artists of real contemporary importance. <laughs> 